Well, hello everybody and welcome. You have tuned in to episode number 407 of Linux in the Ham Shack. This is our Weekender Edition. This is where we bring you upcoming amateur radio contests and special events, upcoming open source special events, and we talk about distributions and all things in the amateur radio and open source world in little bitty bite-sized nuggets, and then we slip into the world of hedonism, which is what life is worth living for. So stay tuned for that towards the end of the show. That is the best part of everyone's day. But before we get rolling here, let's introduce the normal cast of characters that bring you Linux in the Ham Shack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD. All right, so... We want, to, we want to trot through this so we can get down to the good stuff at the end, but we also want to let you know what you can participate in over the next couple of weeks because there's some interesting stuff coming up, and we start off with contests in the amateur radio world, and Bill brings us those, so take it away. Yeah, and of course, you always get these from contestcalendar.com, the most amazing contestcalendar.com in the universe. Um, again, we only mentioned a fraction of the contests that are available every weekend. There's plenty of sprints and stuff like that that you can find in there. So go hit that uh, website and and check out what's going on and what you're interested in. But uh, we always like mentioning a few that uh, spring a little interest to uh, to us. So uh, here we go. This weekend we have the the Holly no no it's the Holy Land DX contest. I knew it was Holy Land. Uh, when is it? It's 2100 Zulu, April 16th at 2100 Zulu, April 17th. And we're 160 meters through 10 meters, no work. Uh, modes here are single sideband, CW, and digital. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what is this? This is to promote contacts between radio amateurs around the globe and Israeli hams uh, to aid amateurs to achieve the Holy Land Award and other Israeli awards. A lot of options are here for you single ops, so uh, check it out. We've got single operator mix, which is all bands. We've got single operator single sideband, single operator CW only. Uh, we have single operator digital mode, and it looks like here they're doing RIDI and PSK31 as acceptable digital modes um, for that. And then we have single operator FT8 only for those of you that only have one application installed on your computer. Uh, there you go. You can go ahead and try that. And then also they have a QRP mode here. So a QRP uh, uh, option for a category for a single op. So plenty of options there to run your station. So uh, pick one and check out this contest uh, this weekend. We also have uh, Texas State Parks on the air, which, of course, sounds like a special event. But no, you can get points. So guess what? It's a contest. And it runs, let's see, we got two separate times here. We have uh, 1,400 Zulu on April 17th to 0,200 Zulu April 18th. And we have 1,400 Zulu uh, to 20, or, yeah, 2,000 Zulu, <laughs> 2,000 Zulu April 18th. So, yeah, two segments of time. Uh, what bands are there? Hey, it's all bands. And what modes? All modes. So pick one. Uh, what is it? This event will take place every year on the third weekend of April, except when Easter falls on the third weekend. Then the contest is moved to the second weekend of April. Well, that's confusing, right? <laughs> you got to keep track of that calendar. Well, it's uh, just no area... more confusing than Easter itself. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Lake Area Amateur Radio Club, K5LRK, enjoyed participating in this event in 2015 and 2016. And we're saddened to hear that the initial sponsor, Tom King, w WK5 DX from Houston, who was running TS Pota had gone silent key in 2015. The K5 LRK club members decided that this was an event that should remain available as it provides a great opportunity for clubs to get out, have fun, and enjoy our great state of Texas, America. <laughs> so we carry on the torch for Tom. Please join us uh, during this event in a variety of state parks in Texas as we continue the Texas State Parks on the Air event. So check out that for Texas. And, of course, we couldn't go a weekend without thinking about the state QSO party challenges and the work doll QSO parties. And this weekend we have Michigan and Ontario. So if you're looking for those to put in the logbook to get on those challenges and everything else, do it. <laughs> next weekend, what do we have here next weekend? We have, oh, great, a QRP event here. We got a QRP to the field. And it runs 0800 to 1800, a local time. So that's local to you on April 24th. The bands are 80, 40, 20, and 15. Uh, modes are CW at 5 watts and single sideband at 10 watts. 
And what is it? QRP to the Field is an annual operating event to encourage QRPers and soda stations to get out of the house and operate portable from the field or a summit. And, of course, make QSOs and have fun. Operation from your home shack is allowed this year. Uh, QRP to the Field encourages participation by QRP hams of all skill levels. CW speeds are usually in the 13 to 20 word per minute range. So nothing too, too scary, but you know, you're going to get those people that are really fast. So you get those in any contest. So yeah, check out QRP to the Field ne- next weekend. Let's see what else we have. The Hel- Helvetia, Helvetia contest. And I thought this was the Hellschreiber contest, but it wasn't. <laughs> it's a Helvetia contest. And it runs from 1300 Zulu April 24th to 1259 Zulu uh, April 25th. Bands there are 160 through 10. No work. Uh, modes are single side band, CW and digital. The Helvetia contest is open to amateur radio operators and SWLs in Switzerland and other countries. And of course, they want you to work Switzerland. So, <laughs> so work them and get them in the log. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Next weekend, uh, the state QSA party challenge is Florida. So you can work all your favorite Florida crazy people. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all crazy, just some of them are. Uh, but yeah, Florida. So go ahead, uh, work the Florida QSO party, and uh, yeah, have some have some fun on the bands next weekend. And some of those crazy people move to Montana, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we had to do. Get away from crazy there, right? <laughs> all right. So moving on from amateur radio contests, we have some amateur radio special events coming up. Uh, the first one is. A special event in conjunction with World Amateur Radio Day, where they're going to be lighting up uh, McMurdo Station in Antarctica. So if you haven't had that elusive Antarctic contact, this might be your time. Uh, They're going to be operating from April 17th through April 18th, 2230 Zulu to 0800 Zulu each day. Uh, the member of the AWRL named Mark Driscoll, Whiskey 5 Mike Echo Delta, will be on the air from Antarctica. He'll be operating Kilo Charlie 4, Uniform Sierra Victor, from McMurdo Station, the U.S. research and logistics station built on bare volcanic rock, the farthest south solid ground that is accessible by ship. He'll be operating from, well, we already told you that. Uh, he'll also be on the air for the AWRL Rookie Roundup on April 18th from 2100 to 2359 UTC. Uh, on or about single sideband 14.243 and 14.070 for FT8. Look for more information about World Amateur Radio Day activities on the website, which we'll have a link in the show notes. And speaking of World Amateur Radio Day, that's a special event all on its own. Uh, April 18th through April 19th, 1300 Zulu to 0400 Zulu daily. Call sign Whiskey 7 Whiskey. They'll be operating digitally. Echolink Rockham Conference, which is 531091. They'll be on 2585 on All Star, as well as 47620 and 53130. This will be our sixth annual World Amateur Radio Day celebration on the VoIP Echolink system. We have 16 hour net with net controllers from all over the world. A special event QSL card will be available. And join us again for one of the largest special events on Echolink. We will also have All Star and DMR as well. And finally, we have the long running, as in all year. Uh, all frequency, all call, all mode, all, you know, wherever. It's going to be everywhere. Uh, Quebec Parks on the Air, QC POTA. Quebec Parks on the Air is an event. Well, yeah. The purpose of which is to draw attention to the importance of protecting nature and to encourage the development of radio skills, especially in portable operations. The event encourages amateur radio operators to operate portable from designated parks in Quebec and in turn generate attention for these areas whilst providing the amateur radio community whilst an interesting and rewarding activity. We encourage you to consider vacationing in one of Quebec's beautiful parks and visiting a park as Quebec is blessed with a magnificent diversity of parks. Parks, 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 parks. Quebec's CPAC, S-E-P-A-Q, operates 41 national parks and wildlife reserves, and there are 190 regional parks. Each of these 231 parks is eligible for the QC POTA event, a link to which will be in the show notes. It's all about the parks. And uh, parks. maybe maybe by the time QC Boda wraps up, people will actually be able to visit Quebec again from, like, here. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. So there you go. So let's see. Those are the ones we 
mentioned, uh, you can always look at the ARRL if you want to browse around, or you can just listen to us because we'll give you the good ones. Uh, but there are a few other special event stations out there. Uh, of course, there's special events running all the time. So check out what we uh, didn't give an opportunity to mention. Announcements, mailing list, still being recovered. Yes. Yes, it is. I <laughs> uh, haven't even had a chance to look at Mailman 3 again, but I'm hoping to get to this soon. I really am. I really am. Let's see. Let's let's come up with a ham radio challenge right off the cuff here, because this is the one from last time. So how, how do we want to challenge people in amateur radio? You challenge them to try the ham pie project if they've got a pie lying around. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why, why not do that? If you've, got a, if you've got a raspberry pie that you don't have any purpose for right now, which most of us do, uh, give ham pie a try. Hook it up to your rig. See how it interfaces. Uh, try it with remote ops and stuff like that. And uh, if nothing else, uh, use Boink <laughs> or something. It's, it's all on there. So, so how's how's yeah. that for uh, picking one out Perfect. of nowhere? So, <laughs> okay. yeah, install Ham Pie and turn off Boink. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. So let's move on into this weekend in open source. And uh, Bill has chosen a distribution to give a try. We have mentioned this distro before. I think it was maybe a couple of years ago, though. So. Uh, yeah. We'll bring it, we'll bring yeah, it back this, to your mind again. This one kind of gets mentioned here and there, but uh, yeah, this is MX Linux and MX uh, 19.4. This is a new release, <coughs> or I should say a, a new refresh. It's the fourth refresh of our MX 19 release, consisting of bug fixes and application updates since our original release of MX 19. If you are already running MX 19, there is no need to reinstall. Packages are all available through the regular update channel. The standard MX 19.4 releases uh, 32-bit and 64-bit uh, feature the latest Debian 4.19 kernel. The AHS, the Advanced Hardware Support, ISO features a Debian 5.10.24 kernel. Uh, Mesa 220.3 updates, as well as new updated firmware packages. So make sure you grab the right one if you want to try this out. If you have a uh, newer hardware, you definitely want the... Uh, the advanced hardware support uh, uh, version. Uh, the KDE ISO has also been updated and being based on that advanced hardware support image also has that uh, 5.10 kernel and updated firmware and Mesa packages. So you can uh, try both. And as usual, this release includes the latest updates from Debian 10.6 Buster and MX repos. This includes stuff like uh, XFCE 4.14 or KDE Plasma 5.15. Uh, GIMP 2.10.12, and I think there's actually a newer release of that now, so probably update that as well. Uh, Mesa 18.3.6, uh, latest Debian kernels, of course. So the browser is uh, Firefox 87, which of course will probably be like 90 by the time you download it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, video player is uh, video uh, VLC 3.0, so yeah, that's that's just released uh, 3.0 not too long ago. So that's in there, and of course the music player is Clementine 1.3.1. And, of course, they have Thunderbird and LibreOffice on there as well as kind of like default stand-in packages. Uh, of course, you can always uninstall anything you don't want to use. But, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to give uh, MX a try, if you haven't seen it in a while or whatever, this is a newly uh, freshened up build with all the latest goodies. So uh, so give it a whirl. All right, cool. Another distribution to try, which I probably won't get a chance to. Is, was MX one of the ones that was sort of security-focused? I can't remember. I don't think it was. Um, no, nah, it was uh, which, on which, like, you're thinking like the audio one? That was AV Linux. No. What did you think MX was? MX was supposed to be like a simple, medium impact to your system build. So it wasn't supposed to be for like low-end systems, although obviously with XFCE, it, it tends to run a little nicer on the lower build systems. Um, and the fact that they still offer a 32-bit image would probably be a, a good a good option for uh for putting on a netbook or something like that that's you know, that's you know, long in the tooth at this point right right okay cool so that's an interesting distribution i know we have mentioned it before but it's been sort of out of my mind for a while but yeah definitely one to check out and uh, now we move on to open source events and when we get to open source events we let cheryl unmute and uh, tell us all about these that are coming up and uh, these are actually kind of getting to the point where if you want to register for them you probably have to do it pretty quick so what do we got so our first one is the Red Hat Open Source Summit. It's April 27th and 28th. It's online and it is free. 
The information for it says the premier open source event is expanding to become an all new flexible conference series consisting of two part immersive virtual experience as well as a global tour of small scale in person events. This series will create collective opportunities to share experiences, innovations, and insights. Red Hat Summit 2021 is where we come together to uplift perspectives in enterprise IT all around the world, ensuring that every contribution has a place, every person has a voice, and every question has a meaning. And there's more information regarding this in the show notes. Our next one is the Tech Nation Conference. It is May 10th through the 12th. It's online. It's free. The information for it is the new and improved edition of Tech Nation is approaching fast. The share fully online, three days of developer mayhem. Every day between 1600 and 1900, we will deliver quality content. At Tech Nation, you can broaden your knowledge at our hands-on labs, technical sessions, and live demonstrations and workshops, which are all focused on technology of the next era. Tech Nation 2021 will bring more than a thousand developers and the best girls from all over the world. Feature topics are AI and ML, IoT and embedded, developer experience, modern infrastructure, security, and new and cool. Share your passion with like-minded people, improve your skills, and have fun in an easygoing atmosphere at Tech Nation. And our last one is the International Conference on Open Source Systems. It's May 12th and 13th. It's online. It's free. The 17th International Conference on Open Source Systems aims at providing an international forum where a diverse community of professionals from academia, industry, and the public sector, and diverse FLOSS initiatives can come together to share research findings and practical experiences. The conference is also a forum to provide information and education to practitioners, identify directions for further, excuse me, further research, and to be ongoing platform for technology transfer no matter which form of FLOSS is being pursued. And again, all the information on these things that are in the show notes. All right. Very good. So plenty of things you can participate in, most of which don't cost any money at all. It's just a little bit of your time to uh, spend at the computer and learn about things. So go ahead and check those out. And as far as an open source challenge, we can just go right back to the amateur radio challenge and uh, install HamPy and check it out because it's one of those Linux in the ham shacky topics that cover both worlds. So. Absolutely. Nice, nice way to sort of blend those two together and not have to do any work on our part. So, <laughs> uh, so with that, let's move on to the good stuff. Let's talk about some hedonism. And we have a really good one coming up here in our, well, not our, Cheryl's recipe corner for hedonism. This is one we tried out the other day. Uh, it takes a little while to prepare, but it's certainly well worth it, especially if you sort of like things that have a good flavor, like, all spicy and Asian things and uh, Indian cuisine and all that kind of thing. So if you're into that sort of thing or think you might want to dabble in it, you might want to check this one out. So Cheryl, tell us what we got. Okay. So this week, our recipe is chicken korma. Russ and I are big fans of Indian food, and we've been craving chicken korma for a while. Um, The Indian restaurant we like to eat at is not nearby, and we didn't necessarily want to make that trek. So... I sat down and decided to peruse the web for the recipe. And after a couple of days, finally found something that I thought was pretty close to what we had enjoyed. Um, so that is, you know, that is what I picked up for today. Uh, I fixed this for dinner three nights ago, I believe. Um, and for those unaware, uh, chicken korma, which there are other forms of korma, um, is the... It's a creamy, fragrant sauce with onion, garlic, ginger, and cashews. Ours was served over basmati rice, and we found a really good roasted garlic naan at our local Walmart uh, that we enjoyed with it. So, and of course, ours was done mild. If you want it a little more spicy, add more chili powder or cayenne. So, to make this, it's it's not a hard recipe. It's just very time-consuming. Uh, you need cashew halves, boiling water, garlic, ginger root, vegetable oil, bay leaves, onion, coriander, garam masala, cumin, turmeric, chili powder, some chicken, some tomato sauce, some chicken broth, some heavy cream, some plain yogurt, uh, and some cornstarch. And that's Is, Isn't that's that the uh, Greek yogurt, though? I could not get regular yogurt, I so I got the Greek yogurt, which is a little thicker. 
uh, and it came out just fine. So, yeah, just fine. yeah. And it, as I said, it's it's not it's not a quick and easy recipe to make. Um, there's a lot of ingredients there, but it's not really hard at all. It's just time consuming than the steps that you have to do for it. So yeah, there's a lot course, of like you have to you have to assemble like each of the individual parts, and then you sort of accumulate them all together into the final product. <laughs> Right, right. Because like, you know, you, you put the boiling water and the cashew halves together, let those set for a while. Uh, you peel your ginger root and you cook it with the bay leaves and the onion and the spices. And then you chuck your chicken in and then you add your tomato sauce and your chicken broth. And then you do the cream and the yogurt and your cashew halves and the boiling water and all that. And then ta-da, about, I would say it probably took me about an hour, hour and a half of course, I don't move terribly quickly because I'm in a wheelchair in the kitchen. Um, but it it came out to be quite yummy. So yes, it sure did. Yeah, and there's gonna be leftovers tonight for dinner. So woohoo, woohoo, <laughs> yep. And by the way, so, definitely use the basmati rice because it's a nice it's a nice aromatic rice, not just like your regular you know minute rice or whatever that you get out of the counter. And uh, it goes really well with korma. So yeah, it would, jasmine rice would work just as well. Right. But but we we use basmati, um, and bless our dogs, they are not big fans of just plain white rice, but they were huge fans of the basmati rice that fell when I was uh, cooking the rice and things like that. So I think we have small children addicted, children being dogs, addicted to basmati rice now. So, but yeah, it, it did come out quite well. So, all right. And then for my drink corner, I decided to carry the Indian thing through, and it is for a masala martini, and it has gin, lime juice, simple syrup, cumin, kosher salt, and a lemon slice for garnish. So, and I think I might actually, I'm not a big gin fan, but I think I might try this tonight. I, I think I might actually try that tonight too. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah. So. I, well, actually, that might that might happen sooner than now. later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I didn't have anything that I could pull off the shelf readily to try and do a review on, as far as uh, a whiskey or a scotch or anything like that. So I'm just going to put in a quick plug here for some malt beverages that I've been drinking a lot of lately, called Four Loco. And um, this is one of those things that's a very hipster kind of drink. They're, they do have a couple of seltzers, but I haven't touched those, nor will I ever. Um, but their malt beverages are awesome because they come in 25-ounce cans. You know, they're the big, tall ones. Like, you see, like, the uh, Smirnoff Lime Maritas and that kind of thing. So if you've seen those, um, these will be on the shelf or in the cooler somewhere near them. Uh, but what's great about them is they have really good flavors. They have, like, a gold, a red, a black, and then they have sort of... Uh, off flavors like sour grape and watermelon and mango and, and things like that, strawberry lemonade. But what I love about them is they taste really good. They don't taste like somebody put some crystal light in a beer. They actually have good flavor considering they're malt beverages. And the best part about them is they're all 12 to 14% alcohol. So they actually have a reasonably high proof for a malt beverage. So basically one of these and you get good and toasty <laughs> and uh, <laughs> most, most uh, convenience stores sell them for about two and a quarter to two fifty a piece. So that is a uh, pretty good value. And if you find one of these flavors, you, you know, like uh, I, I can highly recommend the four local. I've tried a couple of the other high proof ones. They're just not as good. And to, the gold one is probably the one I drink the most because it goes perfect with a cigar because it has a little bit of that, um, I, I don't want to say it tastes like an energy drink, because it's not like you're drinking a Red Bull, but it sort of doesn't have a, it doesn't have a flavor profile, like it's not, it's not grape or apple or something like that. It has a flavor, but it's more along the lines of a neutral energy drink kind of flavor, and it doesn't affect having something with it. Um so it's perfect for a cigar or something like that. If I don't want to pull out the whiskey, these things are great. So, and I keep probably keep ten or twelve of them in the in the uh, the venue fridge all the time, so I can just reach in and grab one and and enjoy myself. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently they're not available up here. Oh, that's too bad. I mean, this is probably not the kind of thing you would drink anyway. But 
if you can get them, you know, and, and it's the kind of thing that's up your alley. Because, like I say, it's it's a specific kind of drink. It's not a beer. It's not a whiskey. It's you know, it's one of those fruity malt beverage kind of things. But they do have some, like I said, the the, the gold, the black, and the red are kind of uh, yeah. neutrally flavored kind of things. And uh, like I said, at fourteen <laughs> percent, they're they're pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so anyway. It's like a wine, you know. Like yeah, a, it's a, it's like a wine proof. Wine, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, twenty five ounces. It's the same size as a bottle of wine. So, <laughs> speaking of wines, I had that. Uh, I don't have it now, but I, I did have a bottle of that. Um, uh, what is the uh, what's the uh, the crimes one? Crimes wine. What is it called? Oh, like uh, high crimes or something? No. Yeah, something like nineteen crimes. Nineteen there crimes. You go. That's it. <laughs> 19 crimes i had the one with snoop dog on the front uh the snoop cali rose yeah no, actually, that? not the rose but i had the snoop cali uh uh let's see hold on i'm trying to get the actual yeah except cookies whatever i'm trying to get their stupid website <laughs> <laughs> the, the wines <laughs> i was trying to get the right name yeah the the 19 crimes snoop cali red and uh it actually is really good <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen those here. So yeah, yeah, the nineteen crimes are uh, they're pretty. I mean, they're pretty prevalent here. We can get them uh, pretty much every. Even the gas stations have it. So, uh, uh, and I've had the the various ones before. Like that's the one that has the uh, uh, the one that's a uh, rum rum barrel uh, um, flavored as well, or whatever red was what it banished or something like that. The banisher, the, the banished. Yeah, that is. Uh, finished off in a rum or something like that rum barrels uh but yeah this is uh when i saw on the thing i saw snoop's mug on the uh <laughs> on the bottle and i'm like oh i gotta buy that you know that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty good and uh, yeah it was it was really really good uh for a red wine so if you like uh red wine blends or whatever it's kind of like uh I'd say it's close to, yeah, it says it's close to a Zinfandel, and I would kind of agree, you know, it kind of tastes like an old Vines in or something like that. Um, definitely a good, good, uh, good, uh, good red wine to, uh, to try and, uh, even share if you can in your uh, current state of things. Uh, the Snoop Cali Red from 19 Crimes. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Um, I just ran through their store locator, and yeah, they're available everywhere here. So. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. Then we need to go there shopping. Yep. Yeah, they're pretty cheap normally. I, I found at the gas station once in a while for seven ninety nine a bottle on sale. Oh, all <laughs> so right. Generally, it's about a, a ten ninety nine dollar bottle of wine here. Anyway, regular price. Yeah. So yeah, we'll check you those can definitely out. Find it on sale. Yeah, I'm sure Hy-Vee will have them, or uh, maybe even Walmart has them, or and the Brown Derbies, I'm sure do because they're 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 pretty prevalent according to their their little pins all over the, the local map. So gotcha. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, if you're gonna try some, I would definitely pass on the hard shard. Uh, not a fan. Um, I do like a chardonnay once in a while, but yeah, not chardonnays are one. too dry for us, generally speaking. So yeah, we probably would avoid yeah. that anyway. Yeah, just kind of just offish flavor. I don't. I didn't really like that. Uh, but I have tried all the other red wines, and they're all they're all pretty good. The red wines are pretty good. Well, I'll drink those. We can find a white for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just yeah, well, you know, they have the 19 crimes uh, snooze Snoop Cali Rose, so you know, I like right. Rose, pink, so. pink Y. Yeah. I uh, you know, it prob- probably is good. I haven't had it though, but I would assume it's probably fine. So. All right, we'll give those a try. All right, so that actually brings us down to the end of the show. We've talked about all the hedonism we can put in for one episode, and uh we hope you all found something to enjoy whether it's in the amateur radio world, whether it's in the open source world or in the world of hedonism, and we also hope that you will join us for the next weekend or in a couple of weeks where we talk about some more of this stuff. And of course there'll be a couple of episodes, the standard episodes, a long topic and uh, a short topic in between. So check those out, come back and uh, interact with us on social media, hit us up on discord and all the other places that uh, we interact with folks at. We'd like to talk to you, send us some feedback and uh, you know, just be a part of the show. And just before we get on out of here, before we roll the credits, let me go ahead and mention the folks who joined us at this odd recording hour in the chat room today. We had Don, KB2YSI, we had Ted, WA0EIR, and we had John, K1BTZ. Thanks, everybody, for being here, and uh, thanks for being a part of the live program. And uh, we love to hear everything you have to say. 
But with that, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. This has been episode number 407 of Linux in the Hamshack, The Weekender. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, D5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73.